So I've received a few emails, messages today um, asking, how did you make an animated Bitmoji classroom? Not only that, how did you make it with music and how did you make it snow? So I'm going to show you real quick, about a quick five minute, 10 minute video here to walk you through the steps that you need to do it. I make a new animation in my classroom every single day. They take about 20, 30 minutes and it's kind of a fun way we can connect with your class every day. Um, a lot of my students have actually started uh, asking, hey, how are you doing that? And some of them are starting to, to do this too. And pretty soon I'm going to have them start making some of these animations for my, my classroom. So the best way that I can describe how this works, um, it's just a slideshow. Um, and if you remember when we were in school, uh, maybe you used to make those little flip books, like an old school cartoon, where you draw like a stick figure on the first page, then you'd flip to the next slide, and then maybe you'd move the stick figure's leg up a little bit, and then on the next page, you'd maybe make his other leg move a little bit. And then the next one, you move his arm. And the idea is when you flip through it, it kind of looks like the stick figure is dancing or moving like an old school Disney cartoon. Um, essentially, that's what these are. Um, so this is, you know, just the, the classroom, at least part of it um, that uh, I put together. Each slides, everything is the same except for the the bitmoji and the, the little snow thing. So I'm just gonna click next slide through this just to kind of show you like how the little bitmoji moves. So I'm just pressing next slide. And um, the, I'm gonna show you real quick how to go about um, making an animation, right? So first thing you gotta do is you have to make sure that your background and everything that you want in your classroom is exactly um, how you want it. And just kind of like in an old school cartoon, the background's going to stay the same, but you have to pick the one thing that you want to move. And probably for most of you, that would be, you know, your Bitmoji as you kind of import it into your slideshow. So once you have everything as you want it, um, so this is like the first slide for me. I'll show you how to add snow here in a bit. But once you have everything as you want it, it's then simply a matter of duplicating the slide, which is right clicking, pressing duplicate slide, and then moving just the thing that you want to move. And in this case, I'm gonna use the arrow keys, move my Bitmoji a little bit. He's coming up on that ramp, so I'm gonna tilt him up. Oops, sorry, he's move coming up on that ramp, so I'm gonna tilt him up a little bit. Let's move him in front of that. And then you just repeat that process over and over again. And you know, just like with an old school cartoon, the closer that you have your Bitmoji, um, or the, the further you move, the, move him apart, the less fluid the animation's going to look. But um, for the sake of, of this, I'm just going to quickly um, finish this animation just to walk you through it. Now, there are some shortcuts that you can do. Um, again, I'm just quickly going through here to show you how we can make him fly through this this hoop of fire that I put together here, which is all that is. That's just um, that's just a GIF that, that I've added on there. Um, and one cool little trick I learned with GIFs. Oops, sorry. Click the click the GIFs there. Um, if you add a GIF onto a slideshow, it repeats from slide to slide. Okay, so I've made my Bitmoji move. I've duplicated the slide. I've kind of moved him along. He's kind of spread out a little bit further apart than I want, but you know, for, I think for the sake of this, you, you kind of get the idea of how it works. So the other question is, all right, so how did you get the snow on there? How did you make it snow in your classroom? Well, it's just a, it's just a GIF file that I found. I, I did a Google search for transparent GIF snow, found one where it was nothing but the snow falling, and then I inserted it onto the slide. Now, what I learned, the trick with like this snow, don't add it at the start because it's literally right on top of everything. So I can't click my Bitmoji easily. So I waited till the end to add the snow onto there. So I'm just going to go and copy this whole um, GIF of snow on top. And I'm just going to add it by just copying and pasting real quick onto these extra slides that I just put together. And I'm just going to quickly, oops, 
going to quickly go through and, and add these here. One cool little trick I learned too with, with GIFs when you add them onto a, a Google slideshow, um, when you put them on there, they play on the same loop. So in other words, as they move from slide to slide, it's, you're not going to notice like it, that slides are changing. The GIFs are going to keep playing. It's why the snow, it looks like it's falling. It's not like editing or changing each, each go around. All right. So next thing I'm going to do here is how did I get music onto that? Well, this is just a Google Slides trick. Um, what you want to do is you want to go to your Google Drive and you want to add, um, make a folder. In this case, I just have a folder that's called Sounds. And uh, I'm going to make it where anything that I put in that folder um, is set where anyone with the link can view it. Now, you could make it if it's got like student music on it. You could make it where anyone within your district can. But I'll just keep mine as anyone with a link can view. Just press done. So then what you do, once you add your music, this is just Scott Joplin. It's Creative Commons stuff, right? But once you add your music to that folder, now I can go to my slideshow. And what I learned is you have to put this on the first slide or else the music won't play as a loop. So go to your first slide, go to insert audio, and then you want to find the, the song. So there, there it is. There's the song I just had. Press select. And it's going to put this little teeny tiny speaker in your classroom. Now, you can tell it where that, let me move my face out of the way here. Um, you can tell it, first off, to play automatically. You can also adjust the volume, but you know, depending on how you want, I usually have this like 80%. You want to tell it, if you want it to keep looping, you want to take off the button that says stop on slide change, and you want to tell it to hide an icon when presenting and to loop your audio. Right? In other words, when the slideshow comes to an end as it's playing, it's going to go back to the start, but the music's going to keep playing. All right, well, move my face back over here. So now how did I make it where it played on its own? And more importantly, how could you make it where your students, when they go there, like how do they get to watch these? Well, normally what I'll do is I will go and I'll go to file. And you want to do what's called publish it to the web. And um, we're, we're going to change this in a second. So you can keep the default at three seconds. But you want to click the button that says start slideshow as soon as the player loads and then restart the slideshow after the last slide. Then I'm going to press publish and press OK. And what this is going to do is it's going to give me this new link. And I'm actually going to copy that link to my clipboard. And I'm going to paste that link into this, um, this Google Doc here just so you can see what the whole thing looks like. Now, if you want to get nerdy, there's stuff in here that says to loop, to start over again. But right here at the end, this is the trick to making your Google Slideshow play a little bit more fluidly. You'll notice the last part of this says delay MS equals 3000. What that means is every 3000 milliseconds or three seconds, it's going to advance to the next slide. Well, people don't usually move at that speed. So I'm actually going to change this to 250, which is about one slide, which is one slide, sorry, four slides every second is what it ends up doing. And now what I can do, I can go and I can copy that link to my clipboard. I could put this link in my Google Classroom so my students could click it and watch my animation each day. I could have it maybe bookmarked so when I clicked it, the, the, the animation starts and I can maybe share that as my students are entering class each morning. But just to show you what it looks like when this is all said and done, I just realized I left my snow off on the first slide, which will look a little wonky there, so let's put that back. Um, just to kind of show you what this now looks like, going to copy that whole link to my clipboard. I'm going to go up here, and I'm just going to paste it, press Enter, and then you just don't touch anything.
All right. That's it. <laughs> Enjoy.